looking for it. Things came to a head the day we moved into East Atlanta Village. It's a neighborhood in the city that has a little downtown with a bunch of different bars and coffee shops and just there's a great place restaurants. And the neighborhood's filled with well, all these different people. It. It's people that have lived here forever and new young me. people coming into the neighborhood. And we moved in, and you know when you move into a new house, you consistently have someone that welcomes you to the neighborhood. For me, that welcoming party was a man named Clarence. It always finds us when we're counting all our losses and wins. Clarence is a really unique person. He has lived in the neighborhood since he was just a child. When you see Clarence, he'll be walking down the street, he'll be pushing a lawnmower. He would walk with great purpose, but he also had a little swagger, a certain dignity about him. He always wore a hat, and the hat that he normally wore was a Cincinnati Reds hat that he had gotten for a birthday years ago. That hat was a special thing in his life, and it was part of his identity. I could never imagine Clarence without his hat. Clarence is this great guy, he's a hardworking guy, always looking for work. The difference between him and me is that, that he's homeless. The, music that plays the day I met Clarence was the first time I wrestled with this question of how to love my neighbor when my neighbor has no home. As I got to know Clarence more and more, I realized whenever I would open up my front door, the contrast in life that we had. He could look into our house and see what we've been given. Everything he owned he was on his body. And somebody asked me one time when I was telling them about Clarence if Clarence was my friend. And I, I didn't know how to answer that question because I, I thought of him as my friend, but a lot of the friendship was in my control. The attention in the relationship was always dependent on me. He would come and say, do you have work? And I would either say yes or no. And feel like that was healthy. So I was wondering if that relationship would ever change. And, and one day he came to our house and he said, Jeff, can I use your phone? So I got out my phone and dialed the number for him. So he's on the phone and he's talking. And it was someone that was interested in having him do some yard work in the neighborhood. He told them my number and he said, this is my friend, my friend Jeff's number. And if you want me to do some work, you can just call Jeff. He referred to me as his friend, and he probably did it without even thinking, and it wasn't as big of a deal to him, but for me, it made me realize that he thought I was part of his life. A lot of times we look at injustices in the world, and we look at the big statistics and the big categories, but when you ultimately have a relationship with a person, it changes how you view the issue. I went from understanding homelessness as an issue in our city to having a relationship with Clarence. We didn't expect what would happen next, but with one doorbell ring, all the ways I looked at my day-to-day -day life changed. I wish everyone had a relationship like Clarence and lives. When you have a friendship with someone that has more or less than me, it causes you to live differently.